Hello everyone, this is Bhavik Choksi here and I hope you guys are doing great. Today we would be doing a quick and to the point comprehensive revision for Indes 41. This is a standard on agriculture. Now before we proceed, we need to understand why was the need for having a separate accounting standard. We had Indes 16, Indes 2 uh, which covers assets. Why would you need a separate standard for agriculture? Well, that is because of the special nature of these assets. Like for example, biological assets reproduce. Other assets like machinery and building don't reproduce. And if biological assets reproduce and they reproduce yeah, in fairly uh, decent quantities, in which case a lot of your livestock will actually be livestock which is actually from reproduction. And as a result, the initial cost of these assets will be nil. And hence after a few years of your operation, you will have an almost entire fleet where your cost is next to nil. And hence we need special basis to determine the value of this livestock, which includes us such special cases in case of a biological asset or let us say you are having an agricultural produce. Like for example, in case of a cow, there is milk. The cost of extraction of milk, which is inventory for a company like Amul, let us say, is fairly negligible. However, when we look at uh, this milk as inventory, it gets sold at a fairly decent price. Now you need to compare the true value or the cost of this milk. You must have fed the cow for so many years, maintained it. And as a result, your value of the agricultural produce at the point of extraction or if you were to pluck a mango, for example, you might get a fairly decent selling price on the mango, but what is the cost of the mango? So this is a standard which guides you in the initial determination of cost for this agricultural produce. So the need of this standard is due to the special nature of these items. So we need to first know what is covered by this standard. So basically, there are three specific items which are covered in the scope of the standard. First is biological assets used for agricultural activities. What is a biological asset? And later, we'll understand what is an agricultural activity. A biological asset is typically a living asset. It can be a living animal or a living plant, which will be covered by the standard if it is used for the purpose of agricultural activities. An exclusion over here is bearer plants because they get covered under index 16. So like mango trees, coconut trees, they bear produce and they are not produced themselves. So they are bearer plants covered by index 16. Other biological assets used for the purpose of agricultural activity will be under index 41. Second is agricultural produce at the specific point of harvest. After the point of harvest, index 2 inventory applies. Before the point of harvest, you are already, this produces a part of the biological asset. So at the point of harvest, index 41 applies. And third is a government grant, which is linked to biological assets. Again, there's a separate standard for government grants in DAS 20. However, if it is a grant linked to biological asset, then in DAS uh, 41 will apply. Achha, there are a few clarifications on what is not included, like a bearer plant, agricultural produce after the point of harvest, or assets used for the purpose of agriculture, like agricultural land or tractors. They're not, they don't have life. And as a result, they're covered by the respective standards like India 16 not under Indus 41. <coughs> okay, so we'll first focus our energy on understanding what is a, a biological asset and what is its uh, accounting under Indus 41. So a biological asset which is used for agricultural activity is covered by Indus 41. So what is an agricultural activity? An agricultural activity has three essential features. You're holding this biological asset for the purpose of sale. Let us say you are in the business of buying and selling biological assets. In which case you are holding this biological asset, let us say like a goat for example or a cow for example for the purpose of sale. In which case you are doing an agricultural activity or you are holding it for converting into agricultural produce. For example, let us say you are having a poultry farm and you have chicken which you intend to slaughter and sell for example. In which case you are converting the chicken slaughtering it and converting into agricultural produce, you are running an agricultural operation. And third is they are held for the purpose of converting into additional biological assets. So these are the three things, meaning you are running a, a breeding farm, for example. So you have fish and you are breeding fish, for example. So this is also an agricultural operation. So if you are holding a biological asset, either for the purpose of sale or for the purpose of converting into an agricultural produce, like in case of sheep, let us say the bull, or for the purpose of, let us say, converting them into additional biological assets primarily, that is when we say that there is an agricultural activity. Which means, sir, if there are biological assets like dogs, for example, which is held for the purpose of security, so as uh, for security, like police has dogs for security, 
will that be an agricultural activity sir no in which case these biological assets are not covered by index 41 then they go by default under index 16 because they are tangible life of more than 12 months held for use similar is the case with animals in a zoo for example where the primary objective which at for which you are holding these animals is for recreation of the visitors and not necessarily for the purpose of sale or for the purpose of breeding or for the purpose of converting them into agricultural produce and hence even the animals which are held by a zoo will be covered under index 16 and not under index 41 okay so that gives you perspective in terms of biological assets used for the purpose of agricultural activity but again agricultural activity has two essential features that it has to satisfy first your operation has to manage something called as biological transformation. What do you mean by biological transformation? It is managing the growth, reproduction, etc. The life processes of these biological assets. And both conditions have to be satisfied and managing harvest. What do you mean by harvest? Harvest can mean, for example, uh, uh, detachment of the produce from the biological asset. Like, for example, if you kind of trim the wool from the sheep, that is considered to be harvest you are harvesting the wool however when we look at let us say uh, let us say a slaughter you are ending the life processes that is also considered to be harvest so it can be detachment of the producer or cessation of life process this is harvest so what is the significance of this like for example if you go do something called as ocean fishing which means you take a net take a boat and go to the ocean throw the net and pull out fish are you harvesting the fish for the purpose of sale well yes in which case is this going to be covered under the scope of index 41 the answer is no because well you are holding it for sale you are harvesting but you are not managing the biological transformation by any means what you are doing is you are just doing ocean fishing which means you are directly doing harvest which means the fish that comes out to be honest you have not that is agricultural produce for you because it is already already harvested at the point of harvest when you are removing it you have not really spent any money behind that fish except for the uh, fishing cost however on the contrary if you are you are running a breeding farm for example you have dug up an artificial lake and in which you are breeding fish and then once they grow to a particular size you kind of fish them out that is managing their biological transformation and harvesting so there is a lot of investment that you have done behind this operation and as a result we say that over here you will consider this to be a, 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 a agricultural activity and hence these biological assets are used for the purpose of agricultural activity held for the purpose of sale or for the purpose of uh, producing other biological assets you are managing the biological transformation and harvest and hence these fishes are biological assets and you can apply index 41 let us at the point of harvest as well Another example for this would be something like deforestation, for example, where you just take an axe and cut the trees and come back with the logs. Over here, you are directly doing harvest. You are not running an agricultural operation because you are not managing biological transformation and hence these assets will, even when you are harvesting them, will not be covered under Indus 41. It is directly Indus 2 inventory that can be applied in such cases like ocean fishing or deforestation, for example. Okay, so this is the significance of understanding that there should be agricultural activity second is the important thing now that you know what is covered in the standard the three pillars of the standard biological assets agricultural produce and government grants linked to biological assets we'll go into the accounting first the accounting for a biological asset now this is something which is the most important in my opinion the accounting for biological assets there are four things that you have to see first is the initial recognition second is the subsequent measurement at each balance sheet date third is the difference accounting for the difference between the two and fourth is depreciation if any because they have a life of more than one year first typically initial recognition of assets like ppe intangibles investment property inventory etc all of these initial recognition happens at cost and cost is typically the purchase price however in case of biological assets the standard says that the initial recognition has to happen over here at the fair value less cost to sell now this is something which is extremely unique now why would this happen because well if you are purchasing an asset let us say initially from the market at fair price remember fair price would be the price at which two parties are transacting in an unrelated transaction so if i were to buy a cow for 100 rupees well that is the fair price so your entry will be cow account debit to bank let us say 100 however 
if let us say this cow gives birth to a calf in which case at the time of birth i'm not paying anything however i want to recognize this calf as an asset in my books at what value will i record at the time of initial recognition i will recognize it at fair value less cost to sell so let us say the fair value of the newborn calf is for example 10 my journal entry will be calf account debit let us say 10 to let us say gain on initial recognition or again on birth which will go to the profit and loss account so the the accounting at fair value less cost to sell initially permits you to recognize newborn assets as well secondly the accounting is not at fair value it is at fair value less cost to sell so for example if you are purchasing the cow at 100 rupees and let us say there is a cost to sell so eventually if you sell it you will have to pay let us say 10 rupees as brokerage auction or fee transportation cost etc in which case your journal entry would be well initial recognition of the cow would be at fair value which is 100 minus cost to sell so you have not yet incurred the cost to sell you might have incurred the cost to purchase but that is not to be capitalized that will also go to the pnl account but this is cost to sell in which case your initial recognition will be at 90 rupees so your journal entry will be let us say cow account debit 90 loss on initial recognition account debit 10 to bank let us say 100 because you are paying 100 today cost to sell you have not yet incurred now sometimes it might happen that there is a cost to purchase let us say 10 or let us say it is 5 and there is also a cost to sell which is let us say 10 and the fair value for example is 100 so you are paying 100 today plus you are also paying a cost to purchase let us say the purchase cost of 5 rupees and hence your entry in such a situation will be cow account debit still at fair value less cost to sell so this is 100 minus 10 which is equal to 90 to bank this time around you are paying i think 100 plus 5 and hence you are paying 105 the cost to purchase cost to sell you have not yet paid and hence there will be a balancing figure of 15 which you will record as loss on initial recognition which will go to the profit and loss account so initial recognition remember is not just at fair value it is fair value less cost to sell and as a result these will be the situations that you need to take care of okay secondly at each balance sheet date at what value will you record these biological assets they will be recorded at fair value less cost to sell which means for example for simplicity if the fair value there was no cost to sell for simplicity if the fair value initially was let us say 1000 and at the end of the year the fair value comes to either 1200 or the fair value comes to let us say 800 in which case you will have to remeasure remember you don't have a choice of cost model or evaluation model over here you have to record it at fair value as cost to sell which means if the value goes up by 200 or the value goes down let us say by 200 you will have to remeasure so let us say it goes up so your entry will be cow account debit 200 to what well to the fair value gain which will be taken to the profit and loss account if it goes down again fair value loss which will go to the profit and loss account the recognition over here will be through the profit and loss account there will be no revaluation reserve and you don't have any option now because the assets and liabilities are shown at fair value necessarily at each balance sheet date the standard says there is no need to separately depreciate them because as their life progresses their fair value might keep on falling and as a result in the beginning it might rise depending on the nature of the asset then it will automatically keep on falling and hence you don't need to separately depreciate the asset so there will be no depreciation in case the biological assets are recorded at fair value less cost to sell now typically for every biological asset which is recorded at fair value it is an implicit presumption that fair value is determinable however in case certain assets like rats or bats for example you are purchasing now why would you purchase whatever be the reason if you are purchasing them and there is no market there is no base on which you can determine the fair value in which case the standard allows you to recognize it at cost in rare cases where fair value is not determinable and you need to give a disclosure on reasons why you could not determine the fair value now in these rare cases when you record these biological assets at cost you can then depreciate this asset over the life but if you are recording it at fair value in a way the standard assumes that over the life of the biological assets it will automatically depreciate and come to let us say the residual or zero value as a case may be there will be some underlies gains or losses and as we said these underlies gains or losses will also go to the pnl account so basically if i were to summarize the accounting four important things initial recognition at fair value as cost to sell Subsequent recognition at each balance sheet date also at fair value less cost to sell. Difference if any in these two values whether profit or loss will go to the profit and loss account and there will be no depreciation. In case the fair value is not determinable then we give a disclosure and show these assets at cost. Okay. Now a couple of other special cases like we have discussed about fair value not determinable, we have discussed about newborn assets and we have also discussed about the situation where the transaction price can have some cost to sell. So if nothing is given the fair value is the transaction price. 
but there can be some cost to sell in which case there will be a loss on initial recognition. Now the standard requires that you might be given data and wherever possible you should give a disclosure on the differences in fair value due to age or due to price. For example, if your asset at the start of the year is a two year cow which is worth 100 and at the end of the year this is now a three year cow which is worth 150. We need to figure out that how much of this difference is due to age and how much of it is due to price. So for example, if the price of a two year cow after one year is 110, we can say that the difference over here, age remaining constant is due to price. Whereas the difference over here, date remaining constant that is 40 is due to age. Okay. So that takes care of the accounting for biological assets. Next, we go to the accounting for agricultural produce. Now agricultural produce, the standard says at the point of harvest. You have to record it at fair value, less cost to sell at the point of harvest. So for example, if you are a, a, a dairy company and you are extracting milk, you might use that milk for the purpose of sale. You might use it to manufacture butter or cheese or whatever be the purpose. The moment you are extracting the milk, maybe the extraction cost is barely 2 rupees per liter. However, you have fed the cow, you have maintained the cow, you have incurred a lot of expenses. We don't, we can't link those expenses to the milk that a cow gives and hence the standard says okay I might have extracted milk let us say today I have extracted 10 liters of milk and this is raw milk there is no pasteurization homogenization processes that happen on milk it is raw milk and raw milk let us say hypothetically sells at 50 rupees in which case I would say that the initial cost of this milk is 50 rupees and there are 10 liters which means my entry in a way would be milk account debit let us say 50 into 10 that is 500 to let us say gain on initial recognition which may be at 500. So my milk gets recorded at 500. If it remains unsold, it will be there in the balance sheet. If it is sold, you can transfer it as cost of goods sold and against that, you can show the sale of milk. So for example, this milk gets sold. In which case, now you can't show this milk in the balance sheet. And as a result over here, we will say that, okay, I might have just for your reference, I might have incurred certain maintenance cost, breeding cost, protection cost, etc. Uh, so you might have incurred all of these costs and again that what you get well you get milk milk account debit let us say uh, to PNL and then technically you can sell that milk Achha, when you sell this milk after doing some manufacturing process so these were the agricultural processes you can do some manufacturing process like homogenization pressurization etc so let's say to manufacturing cost you incur some manufacturing cost and you sell that milk uh, so there will be by sales you sell this let us say for 800 Achha, now this milk that was recorded in the books of accounts, let's say there were 10 liters that were recorded, out of which let us say 8 liters are sold and hence against that you will have 2 milk. So this is like cost of goods sold. So for 8 liters, the milk 8 into 50 will be shown as cost of goods sold and the remaining 2 liters will appear as a part of closing stock. So what a lot of companies do is rather than recording the milk credit at 500 then debit on 8 liters being sold at uh, 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 400 they will just directly show the closing stock for 2 liters which are remaining at the rate rupees 100. So from an exam perspective what do we need to remember? We will say that whatever milk is harvested and sold well there will be a credit on the PNL when you harvest and there will be a debit on the PNL when you actually sell it. However for the milk that remains unsold you have to record it in your books because it has to be a part in your closing stock and hence for the milk that is unsold you will record the milk initially at the fair value less cost to sell of the milk at the point of harvest. Okay, but the moment it is harvested, Indes 2 applies. The problem that Indes 2 had is initial recognition should be at cost, but it is very difficult to find the cost of milk. And hence Indes 41 has solved that issue and told you that the initial recognition will be at the fair value less cost to sell of the milk at the point of harvest. The, but the moment the milk is harvested, the biological processes etc end and hence after that index 2 on inventory will apply and at each subsequent balance sheet date till the time this biological uh, till the, the time this produce remains unsold you will compare this with nrv so your initial recognition happened at the point when the fair value has cost to sell let us say was 50 at the balance sheet date it is still unsold and the nrv is 60 so 50 or 60 whichever is lower that is 50 or if the fair value falls to 45 then 50 or 45 whichever is lower that is 45 and hence a 5 rupee loss under index to inventory basically biological assets will be recorded at fair value as cost to sell subsequent recognition of the biological assets will continue because the life processes continue till the time they are harvested however for agricultural produce the moment it is 
harvested that is detached from the produce or maybe uh, the asset is slaughtered indus 41 ends and at that point we record the biology uh, the agricultural produce at the fair value less cost to sell after that indus 2 will apply you compare the cost and nrv select whichever is lower okay so this is about agricultural produce and the last part about this standard involves let us say government grants now usually government grants are governed by indus 20 and indus 20 says that if this is a government grant which is linked to an asset then you will either reduce it from the cost of the asset or indus 20 says you will show it in the deferred grant and defer it in the ratio of depreciation what is the problem of taking biological assets also with indus 20 well biological assets are not recorded at cost they are recorded at fair value as cost to sell and there is no depreciation so you can't defer anything in the ratio of depreciation because there is no depreciation and as a result indus 20 in its current form cannot apply and hence the standard has a separate clause it says well if it's a grant for a biological assets which is recorded at fair value less cost to sell then you don't apply in des 20. in fact you check whether this grant is unconditional which means are there any conditions to be fulfilled if you don't fulfill them do i have to refund the grant if there are any conditions to be fulfilled it is a conditional grant if there are no conditions to be fulfilled that is the grant is non-refundable you buy a cow the government gives you let's say a cow is 500 rupees the government gives you a grant of 200 rupees and you don't have to fulfill any conditions in which case the 200 rupees is for an unconditional grant and hence the standard says no further conditions need to be fulfilled you will directly take it in the pnl if it was in 20 probably you would have deferred it in the ratio of depreciation that is over the life of the cow here it does not really matter you will directly take it on the profit and loss account if it is unconditional however if there were certain conditions attached like you need to supply milk to the local community at a discounted price for let us say five years if you don't do that you might have to refund the grant in which case till the time conditions are not fulfilled you cannot recognize the grant if conditions are fulfilled pro rata over five years then the 200 grant will be recorded pro rata let us say 40 40 rupees in each year till that time it will be shown in the deferred grant account if the conditions directly fulfill at the end of the fifth year then you will keep the entire 200 in the deferred grant and when the conditions are actually fulfilled at the end of the fifth year transfer it to the profit and loss account so over here if it is a government grant for a biological asset which is recorded at fair value less cost to sell if it is an unconditional grant you will transfer it to the pnl immediately but if it is a grant which is conditional then you will record it first in a deferred grant and then defer it to the pnl as and when conditions are satisfied now in rare cases where the biological assets are recorded at cost because fair value is not determinable in which case these biological assets will be depreciated and hence you can apply index 20 principles of deferring it in the ratio of depreciation so if biological assets are at cost then index 20 would apply and you can defer it in the ratio of depreciation in all cases the life of the asset is not relevant so we have just discussed an example over here to show this deferral process basically you will record it as and when uh, uh, the condition gets fulfilled so this takes care of index 41 i hope uh, uh, this video has given you some clarity that should be it we will stop for the day i'll see you with the next standard if you have any specific request please do mention that in the comment box and we'll try to take it over okay have a good day bye bye take care